Hello everyone, welcome back to 3 News Now. Today is Monday, November 1st. I'm Stephanie Haney. Thank you for being here for today's top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. We start off today with a report about a shooting of a Baltimore Ravens player, linebacker Malik Harrison. He is an Ohio native. He was in the Cleveland area yesterday and he was shot at a gathering. This is confirmed because the Baltimore Ravens put out a statement. They said it was Sunday night. He was attending a gathering in Cleveland and it was a non life threatening injury that he was struck by a stray bullet in the left calf. Now the Ravens were on a bye week this week, so Malik Harrison apparently in Ohio visiting. He is from the Columbus area. He's been with the Ravens. He was selected out of Ohio State in the third round for the 2020 NFL draft. In seven games so far, five starts, he's had 22 tackles, two of which come for a loss. This is a developing story, and as we learn more about it, we will share that with you on WKYC.com, our app, and of course our TV shows. Now here's something that you hear about all the time, and it's very rare, and quite honestly, when it happens, when it does pop up, it's usually a hoax, but police in Northeast Ohio, in Northwest Ohio, excuse me, rather, did get reports of a piece of candy with a needle stuck in it. It was the Fostoria Police Division that's posted about this on social media. They said that an observant child reported the Kit Kat bar with a sewing needle sticking in it. They said, they said, parents, please check your candy. They said it was truly disturbing, and it is absolutely truly disturbing. But again, want to emphasize here, this is very rare, which is why this is so shocking. It is not something that is seen. In fact, the National Confectioners Association used to have a hotline to report candy tampering. They shut it down because they just don't have the need for it because it is certainly rare, and anecdotally, authorities have said they just don't get those reports. Our Verify team did a story about that recently, but again, very shocking in Northwest Ohio for the Fostoria Police Department to have posted about that. Now we do know about the funeral arrangements for legendary Cleveland radio host Mike Trevisano. He will be laid to rest on Tuesday. There will also be viewing hours from 2 to 7 at the DeSico and Sons Funeral Home in Mayfield Heights. That'll be tonight. And then the Tuesday funeral will begin at 11 a.m. at St. Anselm Catholic Church. That'll be in Chesterland. Now today we are learning that the global death toll for COVID-19 has hit 5 million people. That's less than two years into the COVID-19 pandemic. Together, the U.S., the European Union, Britain, and Brazil, which are all upper, middle, or high-income countries, account for one-eighth of the world's population, but nearly half of all reported COVID-19 deaths. The U.S. Excuse me, the U.S. alone has recorded over 745,000 people who have died related to COVID-19, more than any other country. This is about equal the total death toll, that 5 million number, according to Johns Hopkins University, to the populations of Los Angeles and San Francisco combined. That is a lot of people. And according to estimates from the Peace Research Institute Oslo, the number of deaths, that 5 million number, it is rivaling the total number of people killed in all battles between countries since 1950. Globally, COVID-19 is now the third leading cause of death after heart disease and stroke. With that, we'll take a look at the latest numbers here from Ohio, from the Ohio Department of Health and COVID-19. Today, we've seen 2,461 new reported cases of COVID. Right now, there are now 24,527 people who have been confirmed to have died related to COVID-19 here in Ohio. In the hospital being treated for COVID, that number is 2,361, and of those people, 682 are being treated in an intensive care unit. Now, there's been a lot of conversation about who will and who won't get vaccinated for COVID-19. Now, Metro Health, which is one of Northeast Ohio's largest health care providers, they're reporting almost a 100% vaccination rate among employees. That's a 99.94% rate. They've got 7,700 employees, so that equates to about 7,269 along those numbers. Metro Health President and CEO Akram Boutros said he's grateful for each and every member of the team who took the step to protect their colleagues, patients, families, and communities during this once-in-a-generation pandemic. He went on to say that the employees there are simply extraordinary, and the Academic Medical Center embraces scientifically proven measures with everything that they do. Now, yesterday, the Cleveland Browns lost a heartbreaking loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers, losing 15 to 10. So we look ahead to 
the trade deadline. Of course, there'll be lots of conversation about what happened. Lots of people weighing in on social media, but that trade deadline that's coming tomorrow, Tuesday, November 2nd. So it'll be interesting to see what the Browns do there. Here's one potential that's being targeted according to our three new sports analyst, Ben Axelrod. Andre Dillard, offensive tackle for the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, this is a particular piece of interest after Jack Conklin suffered a dislocated bit elbow in the loss on Sunday to the Steelers. It's also worth noting that Cleveland general manager Andrew Barry was with the Philadelphia front office when it selected that Washington State product, the number 22 pick, two years ago. Switching to basketball, the Cleveland Cavaliers have unveiled their City Edition uniforms for this year and the NBA celebrating its 75th anniversary. It's a throwback inspired by past designs. For the Cavs, it's a wine and gold design with a checkered border reminiscent of the first uniform in 1970. Also, the bottom left tag of the jersey has three white dots and four gold dots. That's an obvious nod to Cleveland's 3-1 to one comeback over to the Golden State Warriors in the 2016 NBA Finals. And that is the franchise's lone NBA title. 2016 is also printed under the tag. We do know that the Cavaliers will be without Kevin Love for a bit. He is in health and safety protocols related to COVID-19. That's according to The Athletic, and he will miss several games. It's not clear whether he tested positive for COVID-19 or was in close contact with someone who tested positive, but we do know that he is in those health and safety protocols. And before we let you go today, one exciting piece of information for Eaton Corporation, a business here in Northeast Ohio. They've got a spot on Newsweek's 100 Most Loved Workplaces list. So congratulations to them. Also today, the latest edition of My Three Things to Know with Stephanie Haney podcast is out and you can meet two of the stars of Oxygen's brand new TV series, 911 Crisis Center. It's following a 911 dispatch center in Chagrin Falls and I got to talk with Mara Wargo and Andy Watkins, two of the stars from the series that premieres this Saturday, November 6th at 9 p.m. Eastern. So check that out if you want to see that. You can find that at WKYC.com slash three things to know. And that's it for your three news now update today for Monday, November 1st. I will see you back here tomorrow with more three news now.